pretty much every PC in the world just like all of them, especially the ones being used by businesses. This has caused impact I could never have imagined. Everything from business meetings falling apart to news networks being in a pretty funny state to the absolute chaos with flights, where this was the amount of flights that were going around before this issue occurred. And now you see how much fewer there are. This is, this is insane. I've never seen anything like this or even kind of like this. So what happened? What's going on? These are all good questions that we should answer, and I'm going to do my best to do that. So without further ado, let's break down the cloud strike blue screen chaos. Quick shout out before I forget. Thanks to Jason Langstorff for letting me shoot this in the studio while I'm visiting Portland. This is too important for me to wait till I'm home on Monday, so we're getting it out as quick as we can. The initial big break for this story was Troy Hunt, who, if you're not familiar with him, is the creator of Have I Been Pwned. So my initial thought when I saw him tweeting this is that this might be your usual ransomware chaos, that this was some hacker trying to take over a bunch of computers and make a bunch of money. That's what a lot of people are actually still thinking. But uh, I can confirm for sure, not only is it not that, it's actually kind of the opposite of that. There's a piece of software called CrowdStrike Falcon. CrowdStrike's thing has historically been investigating breaches. So when a company gets hacked, they're the company you would call in to figure out why they were hacked, what happened, and what the impact is. So if you were affected by something like ransomware attacks, this is the company that would come in and help clean up the damage. Because of that, they started creating a lot of software. Think like Norton or Malwarebytes, but way deeper, and their goal is to make sure anything that even looks like it might be one of those types of attacks is being addressed. And as such, CrowdStrike Falcon is very, very standard at businesses, especially businesses that don't want to be victim to all of their computers being shut down during an attack like that. A lot of companies require you to use this software. It's not like, oh, you can choose whether or not to install it. When you have a machine provisioned by a business, they usually just put their things on it and have specific programs that make sure you're running all of the software that they expect in order to keep their things safe. <sighs> Seems like that was a mistake. But the mistake that caused this is even more interesting. Before we get to that, though, I do want to showcase some of the absurdity of the impact here because the amount of things affected is unbelievable. Sky News, as I mentioned before, was off air for a while. And when they came back up, it was a chaotic hand cam situation. The down detector says everything you need to see. Look at all of the things that are down because the Windows computers they're using to access it can't even be turned on. That's also worth noting. This isn't like, oh, your computer crashes after booting up for a bit. It fails to boot because of how Falcon works, which again, we'll get to momentarily. Look at all the blue screens at Delta. It's insanity. Hotels in Vegas couldn't be booked. Stuck at Dubai airport for over an hour now. Check-in servers down, no movement in sight. Frustrating start to travel. Can't even imagine. So many airports got absolutely destroyed with this. Hotels got destroyed with this. Businesses got destroyed with this. I know my friends at Twitch were absolutely screwed because everybody who's not an engineer is on Windows and even a bunch of the engineers are and the IT channel was flooded with requests to get help with their PCs. Look at all of these grounded planes. It's insane. Airport was hacked. People seeing the blue screens and the crashing everywhere and assuming it was a cyber attack because again, everyone assumed this was going to be a cyber attack just due to the nature of the chaos that we were seeing. Sydney supermarkets are only accepting cash now because all their systems are all with Windows. If you're wondering why Windows is the only OS affected, it's because Windows is the only OS that is insecure enough to have problems like this. Windows is a pile of hacks on top of each other that has resulted in a less than ideal system environment for safety. There's a reason all of these ransomware attacks have specifically directly targeted Windows and not other operating systems. It's easier to get low-level access to control the OS. And historically, Windows has been the thing that has the most security issues. That's why there was the huge wave of antivirus software. That's why things like CrowdStrike exist. Yes, they do have versions of CrowdStrike for Linux and for Mac, but they are much less deep and much less involved than the version that Windows uses. The fact that the Windows version has a driver that it installs should say everything you need to know about how insecure Windows is and how badly it needs low-level help in order to make sure that your environment is safe. So in that sense, I understand what CrowdStrike is doing, but it doesn't make it any less terrifying, especially now that we've seen the potential issues that can come out as a result of this. In order to understand how this happened, first we need to know a little bit more about how Falcon works for CrowdStrike. Falcon's an interesting approach to antivirus. Most antivirus software is something that runs after your computer starts up in order to scan files, look at processes, and try to get an idea if anything looks suspicious. CrowdStrike chooses to work a layer deeper because they want more access and more information. 
what they do is they actually load a driver into your computer, like the thing that is used to control your devices. Usually drivers aren't used for things like this, and their decision to do such is a bit strange, but when you consider the level they're trying to work at and the desire to have as secure a system as possible to the point where you can't boot up unless you're in a secure environment, it makes sense they would do that. But man, <laughs> that's caused a lot of problems because now anybody who got this bad update cannot turn on their computer. And the way CrowdStrike does updates isn't the usual you click the update button and it installs. In order to stay as ahead of the different cyber attacks that they detect, they push updates through a process called over the air, OTA updates. So a lot of devices without the users even knowing just magically got this update and now they can no longer boot. That is terrifying. I can't even comprehend. Like going to bed, waking up, your computer turned itself off and you try turning it on into blue screens. Oh, the reason that this driver was so broken is also very interesting. The issue was this particular file, this C000291 whatever dot sys. The update they pushed was wrong. Somehow they made a change where all of the contents of this file were zeros. Obviously a driver shouldn't be full of zeros. It should have actual content that represents what it's doing, but it seems like their build system that creates this failed. Somehow they didn't detect that and they pushed out this bad update that cannot run. It is not surprising at all when you look at this file that it prevents the system from booting because it boots this thinking it's a driver. It can't read it, can't do anything with it. It falls over. That said, I found this because I saw this tweet where somebody was suspicious that CrowdStrike might have done this intentionally or somebody might have commandeered them to do this because pushing a bunch of null bytes for a driver is so absurdly, unbelievably dumb. This is an unfathomably stupid mistake and I cannot believe they actually did this, much less shipped it to hundreds of millions, if not billions of machines. But here we are. I don't think this was intentionally malicious. I think this was very, very, very incredibly dumb. Before I get to the fix, I want to talk a bit about how companies have been responding. This is a statement from George Kurtz, who is the CEO of CrowdStrike. The statement is as follows. CrowdStrike is actively working with customers impacted by a defect found in a single content update for Windows hosts. Mac and Linux hosts are not impacted. This is not a security incident or a cyber attack. The issue has been identified, isolated, and a fix has been deployed. We refer customers to the support portal for the latest updates and will continue to provide complete and continuous updates on our website. We further recommend organizations ensure they're communicating with CrowdStrike representatives through official channels. Our team is fully mobilized to ensure the security and stability of CrowdStrike customers. <sighs> I have a lot of issues with this statement. Uh, first and foremost, to be very clear, the number of customers they have and the number of computers that are affected, their team being fully mobilized is not enough at all. There is no world in which their team can fix all of these issues, especially when you learn how complex the fix is. It's not a thing they can do. Speaking of that, there's no way that they can use their deployed update to magically fix the bricked machines because you can't push an update to a machine that doesn't turn on. So there's nothing that they can do in that sense to fix this. This is a thing people manually are going to have to deal with. The other thing, and this is just a, a general piece of advice to any CEOs who might be watching, please apologize when you do something like this. I saw this tweet, not from George directly, but from Lulu Cheng here, who actually did a really good job rewriting his announcement for him. I want to take the chance to showcase this. I think it's a much better example of how to deal with an absurd situation like this. I'm the CEO of CrowdStrike. I'm devastated to see the scale of today's outage and will be personally working on it together with our team until it's fully fixed for every single user. But I wanted to take a moment to come here and tell you that I'm sorry. People around the world rely on us and incidents like this can't happen. This came from an error that ultimately is my responsibility. This is so good. You should hire her to be your writer because she did a phenomenal job. I'm, I'm hitting the follow button. She knows what she's talking about. This was good. Speaking of good, Satya jumped on this too. Satya is generally pretty good at the comm stuff. CEO of Microsoft, if you somehow didn't know. Yesterday, CrowdStrike released an update that began impacting IT systems globally. We're aware of the issue and we're working closely with CrowdStrike and across the industry to provide customers technical guidance and support to safely bring their systems back online. Great, nice, simple response. If only the CEO of CrowdStrike knew how to do that. Anyways, now we need to talk about the fix for this because uh, I think it'll showcase just how screwed people who are using CrowdStrike are. So the fix is to boot in safe mode. Yes, safe mode. The custom boot flags that most people don't know anything about on Windows. So you boot in with safe mode, you then open up the command prompt, PowerShell, and you manually delete these particular files. The c dash however many zeros, 291 star dot sys. You have to delete that file, and then you theoretically should be good to reboot. But the fact that you have to know how to find this file, and as well as run a PowerShell command to delete it, is a bit of a large ask. Thankfully, there's a lot of guides coming out on how to do this, but there is one more catch. The catch 
is BitLocker users. If you're not familiar with BitLocker, it's the go-to encryption standard for Windows PCs. So if you're running a Windows PC out of business that has secure data on your machine, BitLocker is almost certainly being used to make sure that your hard drive is encrypted until your password is entered and then the key is verified against their database. So a lot of systems, a lot of these Active Directory-based solutions for businesses would require you to sign into your computer, it would connect to the Wi-Fi, and then it would reconnect send you the key it needs to decrypt your hard drive, and then you can start using the machine. But a couple issues exist in this situation. First, when you're in safe mode, you can't make that connection. But on top of that, a lot of the servers that have those keys are down as well, because those Active Directory servers are using Windows Server. They almost certainly had things like CrowdStrike installed, and as a result, those systems are down too. This isn't just people's personal computers, it's also the enterprise boxes that they're connecting to total mess. So if you want to get into one of these machines that is BitLocker encrypted, you need another computer that can sign in fine, use your password to generate a decryption key to do a safe unlock, and you have to type in this really long manual thing in order to do it. The instructions are here. As they say, you have to go to a second device and go to the Microsoft My Account device list. You have to sign in. You have to take down the BitLocker key that you have in like your Windows Microsoft account online, and then manually enter that in order to get into safe mode on your PC to go delete this file that is corrupted and should not exist to then hopefully, finally, be able to use your computer once more. Now imagine explaining this to Carl and sales because us tech nerds can probably figure it out, but once you're working with more traditional people that might not be developers, might not even know what the command prompt is, good luck, have fun. My theory for how this will eventually be resolved is that instead of telling users to go do all of these things, Microsoft, CrowdStrike, both, or some community member are going to create a bootable USB, like, you know, the thing you plug into install Linux or reinstall Windows. They'll create a bootable image that you can plug into your computer, boot to, and it will give you the instructions on how to do all of these things step-by-step step and automate as much as possible. We'll check for BitLocker and it will tell you how to get through it if you don't already know. It will auto-delete the file if it detects it and it's out of date or is this broken file and it will hopefully theoretically make this process much smoother so an IT person can just plug a USB drive into your computer hit boot go to the USB boot and be done with it without something like that this is going to be a bit uh, miserable for those IT people so be sure to pay a lot of tribute to your friends who are doing IT work right now I can't imagine how hard and stressful this is for them I know the one person who was online at 1 a.m. when this happened at Twitch was having a rough day I don't know what else I have to say here. This is an absolute mess. Huge shout out to creators like John Hammond for covering this so well. Thank you to Troy for doing the awesome thread. And thank you to everyone for letting me know about how big of a deal this was so I could find a space to quickly record this video. One last shout out to Jason Langstor for letting me use his place for this. Check out his series Web Dev Challenge if you want to see four devs competing to build applications. Really cool series. I think y'all will love it. Until next time. Peace nerds.